I'm Jay Taylor. I'm the editor of Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks, and uh, I'm here at the uh, June 18th Virtual Metals Investor Forum with uh, Dr. Quentin Henning. He is the uh, chairman and president of Noble Resources, and it's a company that I've been following now for a number of years, uh, and it's one that's made me happy, and I think it's going to make people a lot more happy uh, time to come, which is why I'm still very excited to have Quentin with me today to, uh, to catch up with him, what's going on. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, Quentin. Thank you, Jay. You know, um, I followed this story almost from the beginning, uh, and you had this theory about how the Great Whitwaters Rand was formed in South Africa, and that took you to Northwestern Australia. And, um, you know, you had this theory that maybe there's a lot of gold in Western Australia, given the same geological um, characteristics of that of that territory, as you saw in uh, South Africa. So lo and behold, you have established the fact that there's a gigantic, there's a huge amount of conglomerate hosted gold there in uh, in that part of the uh, of the basin, uh, but it, it brought with it a lot of uh, a lot of difficulties. It's a lot different than South Africa. A lot of challenges, uh, and, but you made an awful lot of progress since you'd identified the gold. Now, in terms of being able to measure how much of it is there, how to extract it economically, and all of that. So, talk to us first of all. Can you give us an idea? Give our our, our viewers an idea of just how. The magnitude of this of this uh, of these conglomerate uh, belts in Western Australia. Certainly, that's a, a good starting point. Look, um, like you said a minute ago, we did start at a very conceptual level, and this is over 10 years ago. I've been working in this area. I started working or looking at this region when I was working for a major mining company about 15 years ago. Uh, it's it's largely driven by theory. Okay, I'm not going to pretend. Uh, we came here. And uh, the notion was that this little piece of crust in northwest Australia, the Pilbara Craton, used to be part of a, a bigger continent uh, combined with the Capval Craton in South Africa. Well, guess what? The Capval Craton boasts the single largest depository of gold on Earth. Maybe something like that's in the Pilbara. All right. So, so to to fast forward, uh, look, what are these deposits? Uh, they're sheet-like. They're layers of rock. They're often very extensive. You know, these are sheet-like bodies that cover many, many square kilometers. Okay, so we're looking for a completely different style of gold. And then the other aspect is, in our case, uh, it turns out the gold is quite coarse grain. As most people who follow Nova know, we've had to adapt to sampling, you know, bulk samples and stuff to accommodate for this very coarse grain no nature of the mineralization. Look, uh, it's the, what, what Mother Nature deal you. You know, like if... Uh, if I thought I could find an exact replicate of the Vitz, you know, I'd be delighted. But uh, in this case, what we were looking for turned out to be somewhat different. Nonetheless, we see evidence of uh, gold in conglomerates over a, a very large area. And then we also have the, the eroded derivatives of those, the, the gravels there at Edgina, which uh, in their own right uh, appear to be a very, very big system. So how big is this? I think it's very big. Very large. Many, uh, many, many square kilometers, perhaps. I mean, of, of course, you're still exploring and developing it, but uh, you see evidence of, of something that's very large. We've well, stayed 14,000 square kilometers to give people a perspective, okay? okay? <laughs> it's, that's the size of Connecticut. <laughs> All right, so uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what the challenge is. You meant to mention the coarse gold, but you've done some very unique, you, you've really used some, technologies that haven't commonly been used, at least in the gold mining industry, uh, that look very, very promising, uh, separation, mechanical separation primarily. Could you talk about that and how that's leading up to what I think, to me, in my way of thinking, is, is potentially a very, very high margin business, possibly? Yeah, so uh, because of the coarse gold, it actually is amenable to mechanical sorting using various sensors. Okay, In, in our case, we're using X-ray transmission as well as induction, often coupled together, uh, to detect part gold in particles of rock as they pass across a conveyor belt. And the machine can literally flick them off at the end, like a little jet of air. It shoots the rock particle off. And in doing so, it can create a very high-grade concentrate. In the, in the example of Karatha, uh, we can take 100 tons and knock it down to, say, a, a ton or even less of material and capture most of the gold. All right, that's fantastic. That means we have a, a means of processing that's uh, you know 
only seen in the diamond industry, really, where they use mechanical sorting uh, extensively. At least, you know, right now, that's about the limit in mining. Okay, so what does it mean? Costs are, are low. Okay, we can uh, sort mechanically sort stuff for on the order of a few dollars per ton. Conventional milling might be a few tens of dollars per ton to accomplish. So, you know, the, the resulting economics, we are very hopeful uh, will res uh, demonstrate we can produce very cheap gold here. In fact, uh, that's one of our, our huge, huge benefits. Yeah, and I understand uh, if you can leave, I mean, I think you're going to be testing this in the field now. And my, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that when you mine this, and, and by the way, these are flat lying, I think they're not dipping very much. They're very gentle dipping uh, structures, right? So yes. they're very close to the surface. So as you dig this up, as you, as you dig this material up, run it through the sorter, you can leave behind the barren rock primarily. If it works as well in, on the field as it did in the lab, 90 some percent of the of the not I mean of the rock is non bearing gold bearing leave that behind and then take a, a concentrate to the mill so you don't have to spend a huge amount of money running this material through a mill as well right look uh, yes that's exactly right we're we're looking at uh, you know where it's hard rock like uh, Caratha or Beaton's Creek uh, for example right. we we would crush screen and then mechanically sort now uh, you, then you end up with a concentrate like you said it's it's a rock concentrate but it has you know in it most of the gold in your deposit right so that's that's your product at that point well you still have to mill it i mean you have to do something with that to capture the gold uh but that said you know the benefit is you can take a lot of tons and reduce it down to a few tons and uh, in doing so you can capture a, a huge amount of savings yeah okay so you are you're going to be testing this in the field now i believe or you're about to start that so when when do you think we might have some feedback on that? You know, we uh, coronavirus uh, has been a challenge for everyone. Um, in our case, we were looking at scenarios where we could get something deployed almost immediately earlier in the year, um, because the you know materials coming in and out of Australia were delayed. We had to uh, opt for a, a manufacturing unit with Steiner in Europe, it will be delivered in about, I think it's about 16 weeks left, something like that. So later this year, we will deploy one. We're gonna put it at Caratha, and the reason for that is because we see a huge value at Caratha. Look, you know, we've told people we're gonna go test mine there. Now we have the test processing to uh, to accompany that. You know, that's the critical part here. And uh, in, in doing so, we can now advance that project. We can unlock a lot of value. So you've got basically three different areas where you're focusing on, Carafa, you've got Edgina, which is that nature milled um, target that gives it a lot of advantages. You don't have to mill it. It's already milled. It's like gravel with gold in it. Scoop it up. And, yeah. and then you have Beaton's Creek, uh, which I understand might be, could be, possibly, uh, could be your first production. I mean, because you are really looking to go into production. You're not just looking to find a massive yeah, amount of gold someone else right? we're not mucking around here like we also respect the fact that you know we're basically the only gold company that's kind of focused on something like this you know this is truly blazing a new trail uh, but yeah we have full intent on taking things to production Beaton's Creek of course is our most advanced property we've been working there for 10 years we have a robust resource but it's it's e e one that's easy to grow like these are layers like I said so it's not hard to to uh, extend the deposit as you grow but we want to see that grow through production. And right now we are working uh, frantically towards a path for production. All right. So your shareholders, just real quickly, who are your major shareholders? Kirkland Lake is number one. I believe they're at around 16%. Eric Sprott has a bit over 12%. Uh, Mark Creasy, who's the prospector who helped me put a lot of this land together. We just did a settlement deal with him. And it's a big deal, okay, Jay, because... We had a joint venture on the ground around Beaton's Creek with Mark, uh, you know, 70-30. So by settling up and basically taking 100% control of that in exchange for shares, you know, Mark's shareholding is now up a bit. I think it's around 7.5% uh, or 8% at present. But uh, in doing so, it gives Novo shareholders a huge upside in terms of 100% uh, exposure to that asset. So those are the three three biggies. You know, we have uh, a couple, uh, several funds and um well, Newmont's still a large shareholder, about 3.5%, uh, but those are the biggies.
Very good. And uh, so, just in closing, Quentin, uh, what might we, um, what what might we be, what what might shareholders be really keeping an eye on now in the next six months or so? Okay, uh, we'll touch on each one of them. So uh, at Edgenham, lots of exciting exploration. We're doing a very aggressive, what we call max sampling now. These are grab samples, and we put them through a small test plant, get immediate results, and that really guides us, tells us where the gold is in the gravels uh, and the swales out in the, the flats. Okay, that's that's a wonderful approach. It's really help, It's going to help us expedite uh, exploration there. We are going to do lots of bulk sampling on the back of that once we identify the target areas, we'll come in and grab some of the you know 50 to 100 ton samples and use those for estimating grade, things like that. All right, so lots of exciting exploration work over the next few months. At Caratha, we're going to actually go test mining now. That's the whole news release that we issued last uh, week. We have uh, mm -hmm. test plans for test mining as well as processing now with the Steinert. I mean, this is really exciting stuff. Uh, we do plan on transporting material from other properties. So from Edgina, we can transport gravel over to to, to Caratha and put it through the mill. A lot of people ask me why Caratha. Okay, well, because our camp at Edgen is fully maxed out. Our camp at Beaton's Creek is fully maxed out. Caratha is a city. There's lots of hotels, and we got a place for people to stay. Okay, so it's easier to operate there. Uh, but we're going to transport stuff from Beaton's. We're going to transport stuff from a lot of the other projects that we don't even talk about that much, like Virgin Creek and Contact Creek and, and Talga Talga. Look, we have a lot of sortable, you know, potentially sortable uh, projects out there, and and now we have the means to test this. So we're just absolutely delighted. We see all the all the pieces and all the hard work we've done over the past few years coming together, and uh, I'd say by the end of this year, uh, the culmination will be uh, little yellow bars about yay big, uh, weighing a, you know a few hundred ounces each, and uh, I think that that will be the center of gravity for that will probably be in the East Pilbara somewhere. Wonderful. Well, it is an exciting story. I, I've been watching it. Uh, you know, patience is required in this industry, as you know, better than anyone. Uh, but this, I think, is going to really pay off. It's really, we've already done well, of course. And uh, I look forward to keeping up with this story, Quentin. I want to thank you very much for taking your time sharing it with our viewers. It's a fantastic story, and I hope everyone will take a look and go to your website because there's an awful lot of great information there too. That sorting machine, for example, that mechanical sorting is illustrated there. So, so much information. Thank you so much, Quentin. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.